All right, new today, a Thurston County judge just threw the book at Washington Initiative guru Tim Iman. The judge ruled Iman can no longer oversee the finances of political committees. He's also fined the anti-tax activist $2.6 million. This all stems from a 2017 lawsuit by Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson. The state accused Iman of illegally lining his own pockets through the initiatives he peddled to the public. Now, for more on the fallout of this decisive ruling, we want to go to Q13's Brandy Cruz. She joins us on the phone. Brandy, always good to hear from you. Uh, Iman is a household name in our state any way you look at it, right? So how significant is this ruling? Well, I think it's significant in a number of ways. One, for the reason you just mentioned, I think any Tim Iman news is significant to people watching. But look, it's significant for Tim Iman. That's a pretty big fine for someone who declared bankruptcy in part because of the cost of all this, although he has been uh, raising money for his legal defense fund from, from supporters. I think it's significant for the public, both from people who might feel duped uh, by him and what he's been uh, found to have done, uh, and by people who supported him and have supported his initiatives over the years and would like to see him be able to continue to do that work. And it's also significant to state leaders. Uh, you know, Tim Iman has been a thorn in the side of a lot of politicians over the years. And this certainly curtails his ability to do that. Yeah, certainly been around politics for quite some time, also initiatives. So to that question, what extent can Iman still involve himself in the world of politics? Well, look, I think it's important to understand this just has to do, as you mentioned, Brian, with him controlling the finances of a political committee. So it doesn't stop Tim Iman from, let's say, coming up with an initiative and putting his uh, effort and recognition, name recognition behind it, and going out uh, to support it. He can still do all of those things, but what he can't do is profit off of those initiatives. And that's really what the state had sought to stop him from doing. Uh, and so in a sense, I mean, look, you know, if the state is right and Tim Iman was pursuing these initiatives for years and years and years in order to line his own pocket, then, you know, maybe Tim Iman, we kind of see him fade from the public spotlight. If he can't make money off of it, maybe he doesn't want to be part of pushing anti-tax initiatives. But I think we're going to find out if he was really passionate all along about these initiatives that he was pushing, because then he'll continue to do it anyway without reaping any of the financial benefits. We'll have to wait and see what happens there. Uh, you know, Ar Iman argued this proceeding was a witch hunt designed to keep him from running successful initiatives. Do you think he got more attention because he does make life so hard for Democratic leaders? Well, yes. I mean, I think Tim Iman got more attention because Tim Iman seeks more attention. This is not someone who has been shy about the spotlight. It's not someone who's been shy about cameras. And when you're operating so publicly for so many years like he has been uh, and putting through initiatives that get the attention of the press, of people across the state, of elected leaders, of course what you're doing is going to be put under a microscope. I don't know that that uh, equates to a witch hunt, but certainly Tim Iman got more attention than other people because he seeks out more attention than other people. All right. Q13 correspondent Brandy Cruz, thank you for joining us here. We always appreciate it.